Welcome back to my allotment diaries. My name is Emma. These are my allotment diaries. I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. And if you're wondering what on earth an allotment plot is, I've done a blog post all about it and I'm going to leave the link in the description bar below at the top um, and you can read all about what an allotment plot is, what it means, how much it costs, how big it is, all the rest of it. So, because um, that is one of my most asked um, questions is what is an allotment plot? So I answer all your questions down below. Um, it's the windiest day ever today. I've decided to come down here because it's the last day that the kids are in school before Easter holidays and I wanted to get down here when I've not got them to worry about. And guess what I saw on the way in? It's a miracle. It's an allotment plot miracle. There is a great big pile of wood chip. So, you know what my saying is? See wood chip, get wood chip. Um, and that is always my motto. It's free here for us. Um, and I'm really lucky that they just basically dump it off for free and just say anyone can take it. And I never, t I never tend to get here on time for it. And today I'm actually here on time and it's all there and no one's here. So I'm gonna go down and grab myself some wood chip now. And that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but you know. pile of wood chip which usually arrives quite sporadically actually I can never really predict when it's going to be here and when it's not this time it looks like it's one of those big fir trees which has been chopped down by a tree surgeon and just dumped off here I think you know what I mean by fir tree one of those evergreen trees um, which basically means that this is going to be quite high in acid it's like acidic stuff what's the word um, ericaceous I think which means that I can't really mulch my beds with it because I don't want a load of acid in beds when I don't know what grows in acid um, so I'm going to use it for my paths as usual I just think that's the safest bet to be honest so I'll just collect it up and take as much as I can without falling over it's always a struggle for me here all right okay. Let's pick it up. as I can just because it makes me feel in control of the plot and it keeps it neat and tidy and there's so much that you're not in control of an allotment plot as you know and as I definitely know that like anything that I can do to sort of gain some kind of control over the state of the plot I sort of take and mulching paths just immediately makes it look better it covers weeds it makes it look neat makes it look like I've got a plan basically so I'll just show you what that looks like there Hopefully you can sort of see that, um, it sort of looks a little bit more put together, you know, like I'm walking down the path now, not on the rake, and yeah, you've got the peas there and you've got the flower bed there and you've got this neat path in the middle, so hopefully you can see the difference there. It's not a lot, of, not a little bit windy. It's a lot of bit windy. It's actually quite dangerously windy. Um, I nearly, literally, got blown over. Then I didn't. I had no idea it was going to be this windy today. I could only hope that from the last storm, everyone has properly secured everything down. But I am slightly worried about being impaled by something. So when it gets windy like that, I'm going to run in my shed, I think, um, <laughs> and just hide from the wind. 
Anyway, right, okay, that's the bottom part of mulch. The, the next thing I want to do is something that you shouldn't do. I want to dig a few things up and see if they're growing. <laughs> People hate it when I do this because you're not really supposed to do this um, but I get a little bit panicked that things aren't growing or that they've died under the ground and so I like to dig things up and have a look and one of the things I want to dig up is my dahlias uh, which are like here somewhere here are dahlias this is a dahlia I think um, which I never really cut back what's that? is that growing? oh is that the dahlia growing? oh crikey I think it might oh no I think that's a piece of grass Piece of grass, but yeah, but I want to know if this is alive or dead so that I know whether I need to buy a new one or not. Because if I've got to buy new dahlias, then I'd rather sort of know about it now. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to just have a little bit of a dig, see if it's got any roots. Because I didn't dig it up last year because I was just like, nah, I can't be bothered. Hopefully, it'll just live. And we'll see if it lived. This is the moment of truth to see if my plan worked or not. <laughs> say that. it might be growing but I can't really tell you see that there oh bloody wind you see that there is that a dahlia is that a bit of dahlia growing or is that a weed it's a dahlia isn't it no it's a weed is it a weed or a dahlia oh I don't bloody know it's gone now anyway whatever it was it's gone I don't know if this is alive or not it looks a little bit no it's the bowl feels hard. Oh crikey, I don't know if this is alive or dead. Oh look, there's another bit. There's a green thing in there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but that is a green thing in there. That's a green thing. I think it might be alive, you know. Oh my gosh, I think this worked. We're burying back up, he won't know. Shh, go back to sleep, mate. What it is, is I couldn't be bothered to dig my dahlias up last year because it's such a faff trying to get them all out of the ground and they're really big and I don't really have anywhere indoors to start them off. So someone told me, because I'm in the south of England, you don't always have to dig your dahlias up. Sometimes if you just mulch them over the winter, they'll live. I think they're going to live, actually. Um, and a reason why I think that is because I left my gladioli bulbs in as well and they're all starting to come up. So if a gladiolis can survive, um, maybe the dahlias can too. But look at all of these coming up, multiplying every year. The leeks that I whacked out the other day look about the same, uh, spindly and grass-like. Some of them are sticking up more than others. Pretty sure the wind will have something to say about that. Oh, God. I am aware that I planted them out way too early, um, but somebody did say to cut them with scissors and they would like be revitalised. Yeah, I planted the leeks out way too early, but somebody told me to, to cut them with scissors and just trim the tops of them off and then they'll grow. And that sounds a bit scary to me, but at the same time, I think it's quite good advice because I, I do think if they become long and spindly, trim them and then they'll grow better. I might just trim them all and give them a bit of a haircut and see what's going to happen. I'm a bit scared of this. I think I'm going to kill them. What's that? Oh, God. A great big wasp sleeping in my shed. For Christ's sakes. Oh, God. They just love me, animals. Right, I'm going on your advice, um, commenter, who told me to trim them. I'm just literally taking your, your word for this. I hope I don't kill them all and this don't feel right, but I'm going to do it anyway. God. Yeah. Let's give them a bit of a haircut. I don't know if it's going to do bloody anything. I feel like I'm killing them, guys. You're witnessing a murder right now. There, it happened. I'm murdering them. But I've committed now, so I'll follow it through. Oh my gosh, this don't feel right. Right, they've all had a little haircut now, so... They don't look any different. I think there's a very fine line between helping your plants and killing them, murdering them. 
um, and it's a line that I tend to cross a lot but when you don't know what you're blooming doing you tend to just end up killing everything or just listening to other people's advice and hoping for the best hopefully that will do something it makes sense to me in my head it makes common sense uh, to trim them if they're getting long but I don't know I don't know take you home to my back garden where it's a little bit safer and there's no wasps hiding out and the wind isn't like this. I'm a little bit worried about being impaled, that's my door coming at me. Um, so let's go home now, let me show you what I'm doing in my courtyard vegetable garden I think, maybe a bit safer there. <laughs> to my little courtyard vegetable garden just outside my kitchen. I thought I would show you what's been growing out here because I know a lot of you have been quite interested about my little tiny garden. A lot of you are waiting for allotment plots and all you've got is a really small space to grow in. Um, so I thought I'd show you how much I'm growing so far. I remember it's only the beginning of April and hardly anything is sort of out here right now because it's just too cold. Um, but yeah, I'll show you what's growing. So the peas that I've got growing in this pot here, um, which is called Mange 2, is growing really, really well, really strong. I would say it's actually growing better than it is at the plot, and I think that's just because it's in a pot right outside here. It's got really good compost the whole way through, and it's just really happy, so there you go. <laughs> you can see how happy and healthy it is. It's growing really, really well. I have tied these in now, and as it gets bigger, I'll just wrap more twine around here so it gives it something to hold on to, but it's doing really, really well. I'm very excited about this. And this grow bag, which is kind of made of felt, is just doing really, really well. It's amazing, it's not collapsed or anything. I'm really impressed. Next to that, I've got my carrots, and you can see they're starting to come up in the pot, which is amazing. Um, these carrots are Burlicum. Burlicum, I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know, sounds a bit dirty to me. <laughs> but I'm hoping that the depth of the pot that I've chosen is going to be okay for these carrots i might have to thin them a bit because obviously here they're going to probably hit the sides a bit because it sort of goes in that way but anyway so far they're doing quite good i've taken the cloche off um because it was sort of flattening all of the seedlings but they're all very very happy in here um and then next to them i've got my potatoes these are my earlies i've topped up the compost all the almost all the way to the top now um, and they started to grow through which is amazing i'll just keep an eye on it make sure i keep topping it up if i if I think it's not got enough compost over it. But look, all of them growing really well, really, really happy. Up here on the wall, I've got all of my strawberries growing. And again, they're coming to life now because it's April time. They're just looking really healthy. But I think because I put them into pots, put them into new compost and really gave them a good old haircut, um, they just look really happy and healthy. So I hope I get some really good strawberries out of them this year. A lot of you curious about what I've got growing in my little greenhouse here. This greenhouse is from Wilco's and it was probably about 25 quid, 30 pounds. I think it's on offer at the moment actually if you go and have a look on their website. Um, and I've got in here, I'll show you now, <laughs> once I've opened it up. So on the top here I've got all of my broccoli which is doing absolutely amazingly. Some of them are doing really good. I'm very excited about all of these. I'll probably wait for them to get a bit bigger so that the uh, slugs and snails can uh, bugger off basically. Um, down here I've got my sunflowers. I don't think any of these are germinated just yet or at least they've not come through the soil. Um, and in here this is my cosmos and this has all germinated. Look! It's doing so well. I probably put two or three seeds in each one and I'm really glad I did now because you can see that in some of them only one, one or two are coming through. So that's amazing. But yeah, brilliant. So I've got cosmos, sunflowers and broccoli. And I will definitely be adding more and more and more to it. I think most of my veg at my plot this year, I'm actually going to start 
in the greenhouse first and then transplant it out as opposed to direct sowing and the reason I'm doing that is basically because last year I had a massive slug and snail problem and I think by creating the seedlings making them get a bit stronger first and a bit bigger I might just give them a helping hand and just um, a good start and then hopefully they can just fight off the slugs and snails themselves or they won't completely kill them but I think that's just sort of wishful thinking it's just something I've picked up on and I'm going to give it a go basically so that's my little courtyard garden it's coming together quite well at the moment and I'm going to keep adding to it over the year and obviously I'll keep showing you but I think I can really feel that I'm going to get quite a lot of veg out here and I'm really excited to share it with you if you only have a small space you know this is what you need to do really and um yeah it's very exciting so I'll keep you updated hope you enjoyed the vlog today and I will see you on Monday have a lovely weekend Bye.